All right, it's day 462 of this series. As you can see, there's a light housing and a incandescent light bulb. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that from here. That's on my balcony. That's my balcony light. And the apartment complex has notified me that that has to go. They're going to send somebody to change not only the light bulb to an LED bulb, but also the housing as well. So this is all tied to that light, which is coming out of the wall with a piece of string. Remember I did that a few months ago, so I figured I would use this chance to prune the rest of this away because at this point in the year, it's January 2018, all that foliage that's tied to the light between that and the railing gets nothing per day. The sun falls behind that hill in the background that you've seen many, many times at 3.30 p.m. And it really doesn't hit this balcony and these pots and plants you see before until maybe 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So all that uh, foliage that used to be on the vines running along the rails, that has been shedding at a pretty steady rate. And for the last few months, it's just made a big mess. I have to constantly generate all this trash and collect all of these fallen leaves manually and as you can see there's a lot of dirt on the balcony floor as well because I brought in a few bags of California wild hill dirt that I applied to the top of the potting mix for all my plants and I passed that through metal kitchen sieve and that dusting action to get rid of all the pebbles that occurred naturally in the dirt that I scooped up that generated that fine dust that landed on everything and it was a uh, real bear to clean that all off. So it's been a lot of work and here I am doing yet more work to prune all of this away and make way for the person who's going to install this in a few days, the new light housing and light bulb. But I deem it necessary at this point. I think this foliage, although it looked pretty good in the beginning of this video, it's not productive. It doesn't get any sunlight and there's a lot of theories on how you should just prune away foliage that's no longer productive in order to foster new growth uh, changes in the plant and also just get rid of dead weight and I think that's what all of this is at this point I know it's a shade plant it doesn't really like being in direct sunlight as you can see the foliage here looks a lot healthier than what's uh, beyond the rails so that's something we've definitely learned from the beginning. It's not a full sun plant and it's winter so I'm not going to get flowers again or fruits anytime soon. Not when the days are so short and it's typically cold although I'll show you the weather later on in this video. It's not cold uh, compared to previous years or normal years. So I'm going to get rid of all of this and you'll see uh, how far I'll go by the end of this video but it generates a lot of biomass and uh, make no mistake I don't enjoy cutting out my plants like this but out of necessity I feel like I have to because I have no space and these vines are blocking all the sunlight from my other plants as well so there's no real purpose here I'm thinking in 2018 I'm going to go small and compact and maybe just not have all these huge pots um, that are 14 15 inches in diameter at the mouth because that just takes way too much dirt and as you've seen with many of my plant series I had a tendency this year well 2017 actually to overwater and I think that was the reason most of my plants were not looking so hot so I'm thinking smaller volume of soil might do some wonders and you can see the remaining remnants of all these vine offshoots are tied to the piece of string. I'm just going to cut that stuff because it's easy to tie things like that up to a high point but it's not easy to reach up there and untie them with your hands especially not while you're holding a cell phone camera with your other hand. So I'm just going to do the cutting and that'll be it. Uh, the maintenance guy will be able to come in and do the installation. So my balcony should be totally cleared up long before that guy arrives and 
I'll feel a lot better for having gotten rid of all this dead weight. So it's, uh, it's quite a chore. I'll have to do a lot of cleanup afterwards. So as I was saying, I want to consider other methods for 2018 that are less labor intensive. I definitely won't grow vines, although I'm going to keep this one. Uh, I'm going to prune it and basically have it regrow and hopefully something good can happen in 2018. And I plan on moving within a few months. So between now and then, uh, many things can happen, but I don't want this vine to get in the way more than it already has. So I might start another plant series experiment. Um, but I'm going to keep the plants that I have uh, right now. Although, if I get busy with a move and whatnot, I, it may be very disruptive for this channel. I might not uh, carry everything through or you know, be able to start too much new work. So these old, older vines that are responsible for, well, older sections of vine that are transporting water and nutrients to and from all the stuff that I just cut before, now lay here in a pile. And I'm going to have to get rid of that too. It's kind of difficult to hold the camera with one hand and uh, do all this with the other hand. But I just wanted to show you um, you know, all the busy work that goes into this as I talk about my plans for 2018. So I have a pineapple series that's doing okay. Uh, I got a new water distiller that distills water the same volume in just four and a half hours and it's way cheaper than what those things cost. Uh, I don't know how many years ago I had one, maybe you know, eight or nine years ago. Anyway, uh, it's produced a lot of water and because of that, had a lot of um, distilled water that I could use on my plants um, in conjunction with all that wild dirt. I was thinking if it's not full of chlorine or chloramine, it, it wouldn't kill the bacteria. But I think I ended up overwatering many of my plants at the end of 2017. That's why some of my series weren't doing too hot. So for the last two weeks or so, I've laid off on that. And other people have pointed out that it's possibly overwatering as well in the comments uh, from my last video or two. So I think, I think that's what it is. It's a valid thing to point out. So I've stopped watering in the last two weeks for all my plants. I want to give everything a chance to dry out. As I've said many times before, all that potting mix within the pots is very hygroscopic. It holds on to water forever and ever. So if you have pots that don't have anything growing in them, and thus no root system to dry out the soil, stuff in there can stay wet for up to a year, i found. And it just keeps generating fungus gnats during that time. So for the passion fruit vine, I think it's actually been longer since I've watered meaningfully because I noticed that this thing wasn't as thirsty as it had been in the past. You can see all these leaves, they just fall everywhere and make a huge mess and I'm gonna to have to vacuum afterwards and maybe wash off the balcony floor with some hot water so that's what's left you know it looks kinda of sad now the foliage has steadily been sprouting over the last few weeks and months um, ever since prime time and I'm sure there's still plenty of moisture inside that pot so I don't think I need to water for a really long time when you cut these vines you don't see anything uh, weeping out of the wounds as you would for many other plants that have uh, you know, sap or very high turgor pressure. So that just sends all the water and nutrients basically uh, beating out of the wounds. This, when you cut all the vine offshoots, it just looks dry and mostly white and uh, maybe a little spongiform in texture inside. So I'm pulling out all these wild grass seedlings uh, and whatever other weeds that were brought in with the California wild dirt. But yeah, it's a, it's a welcome sight to have all this empty space and see the Joshua tree not be choked anymore by all those tendrils and encroaching leaves that were just blocking away the, the sun. So I think with the lack of watering, everything should improve. It is winter time after all. And without my pots getting more than, say, two hours two and a half hours of direct sun, a very angled wintertime weak sun every day. 
um, I don't think there's much evaporation going on. So as you can see, that looks pretty disgusting. That's below the level of the watering tray. It's got a lot of drowned ants in it, and I'm just going to finally be able to lift this pot up now that it's not tied to everything on the rail and wipe off the sides, uh, clean out that nasty, disgusting tub, and um, you know, wipe off the, the glass table as well. So it, it'll be a really nice sight finally to have all that clean. And since I won't be doing much watering for that passion fruit vine for quite a while, I won't need to water to the point where I feel like I need that tub and have it submerged with, uh, you know, eight inches of water just as a precaution. So this is the weather. It's a screenshot of the Windows 10 weather app taken on the 7th of January 2018. So the weather has been very dry and it's been very warm, very uncharacteristic of greater San Diego County area. I live in San Marcos and this is in Celsius for all of you who don't live in America. So that's to, just to give you an idea of how mild the weather has been. So it's day 469 and as I've shown you already this is all clean and there's the new light that they installed. It looks better. The LED light is more efficient and it's brighter than what it was before that incandescent bulb and they did that with all the parking lights too so the rails clean and finally we have a day with some more sun not just a, another gloomy typical winter day uh, there were two days of rain in that weather report that I just showed you and those were the first two days of rain that I recall in this winter it's been very very warm and dry so contrasting to the very wet winter of 2017 where we got 200 plus inches of rain in some areas of the northern Sierra Nevadas that's uh, jungle levels of rain so as you can see on this foliage it's grown a little bit these little black ants on my balcony are still sipping from these extra floral nectaries so I've devastated maybe a good 95% of their, or 90% at least, of their food supply on this balcony. I don't know if they're still trying to nest in this pot or not. But I was thinking I'm going to go small, and I'm going to have those uh, English horse trowel, you know, these metal cage things uh, that hold cocoa core pots, essentially, and just have them on the outside of the rail and that will easily double the amount of sun that any plants that I start new planting series in will get in the afternoon uh, basically maybe right afternoon instead of waiting until 1 or 2 or 3 p.m. before this uh, balcony gets any sun so I have uh, a lot of stuff going on but at the same time I think my YouTube channel won't be operating at a toward pace, especially around I think May when I plan to do a move and I'm going to clean all this out at some point and make it nice looking. So um, that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you for watching and I look forward to producing some new content for 2018.